So I've been using my iPad for more than three years now, mostly for entertainment purposes and taking notes. So I have this app called Notability. Especially if you have an Apple Pencil, you can use and you can like on a paper, right? With the pen. Pretty cool app. But I wanted to do more with my iPad. I was like, can I make it my second computer? And in order to make it my second computer, I need to run code. I need to be able to run code on this iPad. There are many ways you can do that. In this video, we will see the quickest and easiest way uh, to run VS Code over an iPad. And but I need few more things. First of all, I need a trackpad and a keyboard. Right now, I just have this Keychron keyboard. I bought it for like 100 bucks. It's pretty good. I think it's called Keychron K2 mechanical keyboard. Yeah, it's, it's pretty chill. It has a lot of different options. You can set for like Bluetooth. You can set it for cable. Bluetooth is pretty good. Like I never replaced battery in the last three years. It's running good. It can be used both for Mac as well as for Windows. So pretty chill keyboard I've been using. It's mechanical, so it sounds really good. And it's pretty easy on your fingers too. So we have multiple tasks today. First of all, we need to find a way so that we can run our VS code over the browser. That's the thing we need to do. So the first thing we need is called code serve. So code serve is an extension. It's not an, an extension. It's, it's a way you can run VS code to your web. And so let, let me tell you what we are going to do. So we are going to run our VS code on web browser. That web that local host will basically take our files. We can we can tell us like, hey, we want to like pick those files. It will take those files. And then we can, we need to host that local host to an, over an internet, right? So we'll be using something called ngrok. Like it's called ngrok, I'm sorry. So we'll be using ngrok uh, in order to run our local host over the internet. And I'll use that link. I'll open that on my iPad. And that way I'll be able to run that. So we need to do a few things. Let me bring my terminal here. So that's my terminal. Let me create some files here. Let me create a folder called over the iPad. Yeah, just, just giving a random name, right? I don't know. Really bad in giving names. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to create some file. Let's create some HTML file index dot oh man html and we can do vim index.html come to my vim paste that okay if i just check it if i have that no okay so i have that okay it's good and if i take the url if i go to my browser and paste that see we will have this hello world right so we have this hello world now what we need we need to put this and we need to find a way so that I can put this link to the internet. But I can't put my files, right? So I need to find a way to run this on localhost. So let's do that. So we need to install a few things. So let's clear this guy out. Do you install code server? code server it's called code server so it will via the brew it will install the code server so code server is the extension given by vs code and we need to go to we already are in the folder so if we type code server here so what it will do it will put that file on localhost i think 8080 or 8000 i think it will be on 8000 so it is saying it cannot connect let's debug why um, so we're listening on local authentication is enabled. That's fine. HTTP server is on this local host. Okay, so now it is asking me to put a password. So when we install the code server, it gave us an extension. So if I, so it gives us this config file. So what this config file has a password. We need to take that password and put it on our uh, local host so that it knows like it is us. So it is just uh, for the purpose of security, otherwise anyone can open that, right? So what we need to do is we need to open the file. Okay, so I got the link. So this is where you need to do. So you go to Vim, you paste that link. So it will go to the config folder, which is hidden. Go to the code server folder, and then there's a config.yml file. If we open that, then obviously I'll, my password is hidden, but you will have some password here. So you can change that password as well. You can copy that when I come here, put, put my password. So you can see I have 
my VS code which is running some other project. What I need to do is I need to find a way to pick my different folders. So I need to go to desktop. I need to go to dev. So as you can see, now I have my VS code running on localhost. If I do any change here, let's say hello world. What's up? I save that, go to localhost, not this localhost, this localhost. So all my changes will be shown here. See, this is my, uh, this is linked to that file. I'm not like running any localhost here anywhere, right? So because now my VS code is accessible here, even if I go to Vim, and if I open that file, you can see it has a WhatsApp here. So now we have done like half of the job. Now what we need to do is put that local host over the internet so that we can connect via our iPad. Okay, now let's do that. So to do that, we need to use something called ngrok. Uh, we need to install ngrok. Let's see how can we do that. What are you going to do? You can run that command, brew install ngrok, and it will install ngrok into your terminal. And I'm assuming you're using Mac, right? If you're using Windows, there will be some little changes, which I think you all can do. Uh, I already installed ngrok, so if I remove that, and if I run the ngrok command, if I do ngrok http on port 8080, it says, you can eliminate one simultaneously agent. Okay, so I need to kill some agents. If I do that again. Okay, this is not what I want, but we need a debug. Okay, so let's do this stop here. I'm just going to the dashboard and stopping there. If I do that, I think the connection is enabled now. And it's forwarding to this. Now my local host is to that. And yes, it is saying connection refused. Um, we need to find a way because we are not doing local host. We're doing, okay, so we need to debug. That's the fun part. Okay, all right, let's do. Oh yeah, okay, so now we're good. So what was happening, I killed that server, you know, where we were uh, running this local host, 127. So everything is good here. So if you come here, and we need to put the same password. So I'll put that password. Okay, so if I click here, see now I have my VS code running over the internet. I know there's so many steps I need to do, but it's worth it. So let's let's say something. Uh, hello world, what's up? I am the so all we need to do is open this link on my iPad. So let me copy that and send it to my iPad. Okay, so now I have my iPad. Let me do the screen share here as well so that you guys can see that. Okay, so now I'm inside my iPad. All I need to do is visit site. Now I need to put my password. If I do the submit, Okay, I trust the device. Yes, and if I open this, see, now I have my VS code running on my iPad via iPad. So hopefully it will auto save that. If I go to my local host, if I do 
Why iPad? See, now I'm doing all my changes through my VS Code, which is showing up on my local host. All right, so this is the demo. One of the way we can use free tools to run software on, to run VS Code on my iPad. And funny thing, you can do the same thing on your phone as well. So you can put that link, send it to your phone, and now you can open that VS Code on your phone as well, and you can do those. Uh, if you ever want to see you'll be like oh, why would i want to do that right there is a fun in just doing things right just trying things just learning things if you put like too much pressure on yourself why why should i do that then you won't be able to do anything so that's it that uh, is the video uh, i'll see you next time in new video something different we'll do thanks a lot for watching